Hello, welcome to this video on using Excel for genealogists. What I'm going to do in this video is to illustrate or demonstrate how to use several of the features in Excel to help us sort and manipulate the data organized in such a way so we can make better use of it. What I've done here is I'm going to come off this blank screen onto the screen here. This is data that I've already downloaded and I've opened the page in Excel. I've downloaded this is called the download ancestors I'm sorry download matches of ancestors. I've downloaded that from ancestry.com. I've got a lot of information here. Uh, so let's jump right into it. What you see here is you've got on the first row you've got the labels and then you've got all the data down below but right now it's kind of all jumbled up you can't really make sense of most of the uh, information here but I'll go through and show you how to do that in just a minute the first thing I recommend you do the first thing when you're working with a spreadsheet that you've downloaded from Ancestry is let's go ahead and put in a column here and the way we put in another blank column is we will left click the column where we want to shift it over to the right and then once we left click it it'll, it'll highlight it like you see here and then we're going to right click come down and left click on insert now we've got a nice clean column here to put more information in there why do we want this well let's start by numbering this or uh, naming this number uh, what this will do is allow you to come back and restore the spreadsheet to the exact same format or resort it rather in the exact same order that you originally stored it with. Now, there are a number of things I'm going to do, shortcuts that I use, and I will explain each one of them to you as I go. Some of you will know this, some of you will not. I want to put numbers in here. And I'm numbering these, so again, so if I get lost and I want to come back here, I can always sort on the number column and it'll come back in this exact same order. Anyway, I put the number one right here, and then if you go all the way down to the bottom, you see, I mean, I can hit page down uh, any number of ways I can get there. But I've got, you know, over a thousand names here. I know it's a long ways to go. So a quick way to get down to the end of the rows that have data in it is come over to a column that has data in it that goes all the way down. In this case, I'm going to use column B. I'm going to hit the end key, E-N-D, and down arrow one time. That will take me to the end of the data. I'm going to go back over now to the empty column. And I'm going to put an X right here. X mark the spot. Now I'm going to go back to the top by hitting the end key, E-N-D, arrow up and that's going to take me up to where the data was the next data it run into. Now I want to fill this column quickly. To do that I'm going to hold down the shift key and I'm going to hit the N, ND e and the down arrow and that will go through and select all the cells from the top to the bottom. Now I want to number them automatically. I will later describe this area here. This is called the quick access toolbar. You can customize this with whatever features you want to be installed up there. I've got this one called fill series. What that does, it will allow me to quickly fill a series of cells that I've got highlighted. So I'm going to go ahead and click on it and I want to in, uh, fill this in values of 1 which is the default uh, uh, number here click OK and wall instantly you notice this column is now populated number 1 through uh, 1287 now let me quickly get back up here now you notice every time I scroll down my title bar disappear wouldn't it be nice if we could scroll down and keep that in place well you can let's do it we're going to come down here and, and click on the cell immediately below the row that you want to keep in place. In this case I'm going to come down to A2. I'm going to come over to the view menu and I'm going to click on freeze panes 
and I'm going to move over here to freeze panes again and voila now when I scroll that pane that top row stays in place okay we're making progress one of the things I like to do is simply for aesthetics looks I like to center most of my columns most of the time so I'm going to go to my home ribbon I'm going to highlight what I want to work with in this case I want to center everything in row one and I'm going to come down here and click on center okay so once you've clicked on center up here you see everything in the center also let's do something again this is just cosmetic uh, you, this is just uh, uh, an option to make make it easier on you, uh, and it's just a matter of personal preference. Let's make this text different from this text, and I'm going to do something as simple as making the letters bold. Now that's bold, so you can see that's dark text, and this is regular text. Uh, you can go further if you choose. Let's give it a background color. I'm going to give that, oh, let's say I will give it a light gray color and now that we've got a nice clean tile at the top okay what else can we do uh, one thing we may want to do is go through and make the columns uh, readable you notice in column B it's saying test ID well that columns is you got you got a lot more stuff here than what you see this right here that's this that's column C so Here's the way you can uh, automatically adjust the width of any column in Excel. You simply come up to the hard labels, A, B, C, D, etc., and put your cursor right in between the columns, and you'll see it will change to an arrow pointing left and right with a straight vertical line in between, just like you see now. Then when you get to that point, simply double click it. And voila, the column is now automatically adjusted to, to the widest item in that column. Okay, well, we've got that one. Uh, we've got this. We can do the same thing here. And it's already been adjusted, apparently. Uh, let's say for the number column, we can probably make that a little narrower if we click on it and it automatically sizes. Well, we've got a lot of columns like that that need to be adjusted if we want to. Well, is there an easier way to do this without clicking on every single column? Yes, there is. You come up here and click on this little triangle at the top and you select your entire spreadsheet. Once you've done that and you come back and click, on, click anywhere on any row or column until your cursor changed to the symbol you see now. Just double click it and everything is now automatically at the width that will allow you to read what's in there okay so far so good okay moving right along what I'm doing with this is I'm going to prepare this spreadsheet to be printed well most of us doing this we don't care about the test ID we don't care about the match ID we don't care about uh, the last time they logged in, we don't care about uh, uh, whether it's private, if they have any hints, archived, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to go through here, and I'm going to hide the columns that we don't really care about. They're not being deleted; they'll be here if you want them or need them later. We're just going to hide them. I'm going to come up here, just move my cursor up there. You see how it changed? I'm going to left click. I want to hide that column. I don't care about the match IDs either. I'm just going to keep it held down. Keep the left uh, clicker on the mouse held down to select both of these. Now I'm going to come up here and right click. Come down here and there's a hide button. Left click on hide. Now those two are gone all of a sudden. Fantastic. I don't really care about, for my purposes, I don't care how many people they have. I don't care what the range. I don't care about any of these items here. So I'm going to hide all of these. Let's see. I don't care about the image. I'll hide that one. Uh, all of this right here. I'm going to just hide it all. Now, this is one of the problems that you ran into. I should have uh, 
done this before I automatically you know adjust the width of the columns but you can still come back in and do that if you need to just make it a little skinnier so you can get in there okay okay I want I don't care how long they've been a member I don't care about any of these items here so I'm going to hide those columns and I don't care about their the URL column hide that so basically all I'm left with here is a name and admin and if that's all you need that's okay uh, you've now got this information let's say we want to print this now in a nice uh, 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 sheet what we can do here first of all let's go in and set the print area and I'm going to scroll down to the bottom of the area that I have to print come out to the bottom rightmost cell then you can come up to the top leftmost most cell now that's got everything in between there highlighted as you can see well I've got this particular uh, icon set up here that will allow me to quickly select the print area I want to set the print area click that and when I print it now only the area that's highlighted now will be printed you know it doesn't need to be highlighted to be printed that's just the print area okay there's an old saying that there's more than one way to skin a cat I have a new sin regarding computers there's more than two ways to do almost everything when it comes to computers there's more than two ways to do pretty much any given task so the way I'm showing you may be different from the way you currently do it or the way you've seen somebody else do it that doesn't make one way right or one way wrong it's just the way I do it and so just be aware there's more than two ways to do almost everything that I'm showing you here at any rate now I've got this uh, highlighted I now know the name and the admin but let's say I want to print this let's see what's it gonna look like I've got another deal up here another icon saying print preview and print so I just want to preview what it's gonna look like in this case it's telling me I'm gonna have 28 pages uh, this is what the print preview would look like I can just print this well as you notice as I'm scrolling through here it's just got well, three columns but it's kinda hard to tell you know what they are but this is the number column this is the name and this is the admin column well let's go back and make this print printed document let's make it a little more functional so I'm gonna click the left arrow to go back what I want to do next I'm gonna come down here to what says page setup I'm going to click on that. Uh, what I want to do is I want to do a number of things. I want to give it a page number and I want to also tell me how many pages there are to the document. So the first page will say page one of however many pages we have. I also want to be able to keep this header column up here. I want that to appear on every page so that I know what the columns mean. And thirdly, I want to have grid lines showing so that I can easily see one row from another and one column from another. You do you can do all of that from the page setup menu here. Let's start by clicking on sheet. Here, here you have a number of options, rows to repeat at top. I'm gonna come over here and click on that, and then I have to come up here and tell it. I want to repeat that row on top, row one. Now to come back over here and click on that little icon, and now that is okay. On the same tab of the page setup is another option to let you print. You can print all of these items down here. I want to print the grid lines, okay? And that's okay. That's everything on this tab that I need, but I'm not done. Remember, I want to give everything a page number. Let's click on header and footer. Since page number of such and such a page, that's a fairly common thing to put on the bottom of a printed document. That is built in. You can do custom headers and footers, but that doesn't pertain to this particular uh, 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 lesson, so I'm not going to get into that at this time. So let's click on footer, 
let's see what options we have. And here we have page number, page one of, and these are all the different options that we could uh, give the, give the uh, page uh, that we could put in the footer of the document. But I'm interested in page number, so that's there. Now that's done. So now I'm going to say, uh, okay. Now let's look at the preview again. Now you see the difference. We've got this is column mark number. That's the name. That's the admin. That's the page. And as I use my wheel on my mouse to scroll through, you see I'm now on page five, six, seven, eight, etc. And the numbers across the top, uh, rather the labels or the names across the top, showing up on every page. Now that should pretty much cover everything up to this point except how to customize your quick access toolbar and I'm going to cover that in the next video.